teachers of reddit. What's the saddest thing you've ever found out about a student? I had a student that I taught in 7th grade, and he was my friends, the librarian. Student aide in 8th grade who had horrible hygiene, and he was often bullied for it. For his birthday we decided to create a shaving kit for him. We filled it with cologne, soaps, a razor and other items. We ordered a pizza and we decorated, closed the library, and had a small party to celebrate him. When he opened his gift he started to cry. At first we thought it was happiness, but it quickly escalated to sobs. We thought we offended him, and began to apologize. Through his sobs we finally made out, I thought it would make him stop. We looked at each other, and gently asked what he meant. Slowly the story emerged that he father had been sexually abusing him since he was five, and he thought if he made himself as gross as possible his dad would stop. By law we had to call child protective services and we explained that to him. As I went to do that my friend tried to console him. As it was his birthday his mom showed up to pick him up early, arriving just after CPS. The caseworker let her in the room and the first words she said were, Cold and you just hold on for 3 more months. It seems she knew what was happening, and was getting her LPN, so they could move out she had not worked before. This sad story does have a happy eye ending. CPS in conjunction with our school social worker found them a shelter, so they could stay together. The father was convicted, and sent to prison, where he was eventually stabbed to death. I should have explained that mom was regularly beaten and told that she and son would be killed if they tried to leave. I'm not in any way excusing her behavior, just putting in the context. Edit spelling. Edit 2. Explanation. 7th grade student lost an older brother to a drive-by. After a few months I was told they had lost two other siblings the same way a few years earlier in elementary school. Three years down the line and his name was in the local newspaper for killing an 11th grade boy for his gang. That year I had the 11th grade boy's little sister in my class. What a terrible cycle. You reminded me of my story that's a breaking the gang cycle story. Fortunately, I had a student as a 7th grader who wasn't a bad kid, Paresi, but as the year progressed, became a real piece of work. He became a big troublemaker, and made a point, to be disrespectful in class, but was so 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 frustrating, because he was very smart and a genuinely nice kid one on one. I contacted his single mom, when I started seeing these problems to find out, if there was anything I could do to better support him, and figure out what was happening. He immediately improved. About a week later I contacted mom, to tell her about the improvement. She said, I just lost my older son, to gang violence and am not about to lose E2. He's too damn smart and am not going to watch him get into that crap. It'll kick his as myself, so I don't have to watch a thug do it. I asked him about it, and sure enough his older brother had just been killed in a gang related shooting. I now have him as a freshman, and he is easily one of my favorite students. I know he has a great future lined up for himself. The cycle sometimes can break. One sixth grader told me his father killed his puppy by putting it in the dryer. Another student was living in a four-man tent with her mother and two dogs for months. They put it in a hole with chicken wire around it to keep the dogs from getting out. They ended up going through Hurricane Irene like that. I currently have another sixth grader in need of a place to live because his mom is a drug addict who can't take care of him. She also blames him for DCF investigating because he mentioned his home life to his therapist. I had a very smart kid failing my class because he wasn't turning in any homework. When I asked him why he told me he lived in a hotel room with 12 other people, there wasn't space and it was too loud for him to focus. Colon. I remember in like 5th grade there was a girl in my class who always smelled bad and I didn't like her because of it. Six years later I was bicycling on the local rail trail with some friends and we stopped at an old abandoned paper mill. There were some old abandoned boxcars there, and we started looking in them. I saw homework from the smelly girl, dating back to 5th grade. Apparently they'd been homeless, and living in a boxcar. I felt really shooty for how it'd been to her after that. I had a student, 16, who would stay after school with me on Fridays and offer to help out in my classroom. She wasn't a particularly good student and didn't seem to like me, so I never understood why she stuck around. 
The following school year, her mother got arrested for prostituting her three daughters, including this student. I wish she had said something, or I had thought to ask questions. Kind of a nod feeling isn't it? You were at work, doing your job, and talking to this somewhat weird kid. To her it was the best part of the day, a few more hours away from the terror at home. Other kids are eager to get home to their playstation, and then there are kids like this. Fked up world. My mom is a public school teacher, she has told me some super sad stories about her students, at least 3 a year. One kid had some dizzies, where he had really brittle bones. He was in a wheelchair she said it would break her heart, because he would say that he just wanted to be a normal boy, to run and play like the other boys. She has a little girl in her class this year, her mother was a drug addict. Her father was trying to break the mom of her addiction by I guess locking her up in a room. Well the drug dealer showed up, to get his money the dad answered the door, him and the dealer started arguing. He shot her dad, while the little girl was holding his hand. It seems like every year she has super sad stories. Teacher here I work with emotionally disturbed teens. Last year was my first year, and I had one female student who was the first kid in her family to graduate from high school. Sweet girl, smart, and always worked hard. I worked hard to get her into college on a full ride. She had a lot of demons in her life. Mom is a drug user, sister was as well, and she was dating an abusive boyfriend. About 3 months before the end of the school year she disappeared. Mom left a voicemail, while very high saying she hasn't seen her in a few weeks. I somehow get a hold of her on the phone, and she was whispering. Her boyfriend in the background, was screaming at her, she told me she wasn't coming back. About a week later the police showed up to my class asking, when we last saw her, if we had any recent photos. They can't say why, but mom was as high as a kite. I get a call later, that night asking, if I could come down to the station, and identify her, because mom is refusing. She was beaten to death by her boyfriend, to the point she was barely recognizable. I threw up in the trash, can after seeing a photo of her. She was 17, and killed by her boyfriend who left her body on the side of the road. Mom a few days later and no one was left to bury her. It was a reality check working with her. So bright and had a future, but she was a victim of her environment. When I taught second grade, I had a student who walked kind of funny. It took me about a week to realize that it was because his shoes were too small. I got him some new shoes at Kmart because kid shoes are cheap. I told him it was so he would be able to run really fast in gym class. I found out he was living with his grandma because his dad was in prison for killing his mom. I started buying him clothes after that. At the end of the school year, I was packing up some boxes, and one of them said snacks. The boy looked at me with great big eyes, and asked if I really had snakes in the box. I cried over the fact, that I'd promoted a kid to third grade who really cold and read. We had a student get adopted by a great aunt. CPS had found the girl, when she was 5 locked in a closet with one older brother, and one younger brother. She was always so sad or insanely angry. She was often non-verbal. Eventually, we figured out that there had been a younger sister who had died in the closet. CPS and the aunt confirmed the story. When the littlest one was born, the girl I knew had done her best to take care of the baby. But baby just cold drink that Kool-Aid. I'm not the teacher, I'm the kid. When I was a kid I was abused, a few teachers would realize it. Anyways, I never had lunch at school and I didn't qualify for free lunch, because my mom didn't care enough to make sure I ate. I was probably one of the skinniest least nourished kids in the school. A teacher found out that my mom just wouldn't give me lunch and food at home was. Scarce, so she bought me lunch every day I was at school for 2 years. I looked like the home alone kid, so the way I repaid her was to do the aftershave scream face to make her laugh. She said laughter was a form of payment, since I refused to take free food she had paid for. I found out she was used as a human shield when her father was arrested for murdering her mother. 7 years old. That the reason that my grade 12 student was falling asleep during math class was because he was working 40 hours a week to pay his parents bills. I saw his pay stub. He was a great kid too. One of my ed professors told us a story about a student that fell asleep every day. 
She told us that she found out, years later, it was because a student had to stay up all night, because one of the parents would molest a younger sibling, if everyone was asleep. Trying to keep it vague for obvious reasons edit, this is getting a lot of attention. Things like this happen all the time. Teachers have limited power and training and can only do so much. I encourage everyone to get involved with their local school district you don't have to have a kid in the district to go to board meetings and ask questions and give input. I've been in education for two years. Some say that we can change the world and some say that's unreasonable. There's a happy medium in there somewhere. If we can change even one person's life for the better, then we've changed their whole world. Reddit, let's do it, let's work hard to change as many worlds as possible. Colon. This was several years ago, when I was still new to classroom teaching, I noticed a boy in my class was extremely quiet and reserved, despite my efforts to engage him. He rarely spoke in class, and, while he had a few friends, never seemed to be as demonstrative or exuberant as the other kids his age even during play. I knew he had a younger brother, so one morning I asked his brother's teacher what he was like. She grimaced. Oh. Oh geez, she said, I'm sorry you hadn't heard about them. She then told me about how the boy's father had been a drunken abuser, and about the day the mother threatened to leave and take the boy and his brother with her, and how the dad then dragged them all into their front yard, and blew the mother's head off with a shotgun, before doing the same to himself, right in front of the kids. The oldest was in first grade at the time, and had to make Thenine one on a call. Never had a kid with a worse story before or since. I had a student who lived at the homeless shelter. She was an A student, super nice kid, and had a baby. Her mom came into the shelter drunk and got them all kicked out. Another student, also an A student and just the nicest person told us that she couldn't go to her senior prom because her mom couldn't pay the electric bill, so all of her money that she worked for had to go to paying bills instead of a dress. The teachers pitched in and helped her go, because if anyone deserved a nice prom, it was her. A student disappeared for a few weeks. I found out later she tried to kill herself. Her mother's boyfriend had been raping her every night for years. She never came back to school. I was a teacher's aide in high school for the special ed kids. One of the adult aides confessed to us that one of our students' mothers couldn't handle that her kid wasn't acting like most boys his age acker, that he wasn't trying to get in girls' pants. The mom was evidently calling hookers for her son, and when Thede show up she'd help him touch them. To my knowledge CPS was called, no idea how it ended. Edit it cause people want more info. The kid was probably 15 a sophomore I think. It was 10 years ago, and he was severely mentally disabled. Enough that he needed his diapers changed, was nonverbal, and pretty much cold and move at all unassisted. Please excuse my lack of tact. I shouldn't have even posted this. Anyway, facts are in this case that what the parent was doing was wrong seeing as how the kid was not able to consent in any way. I had this student, Miles, who was a real trial. He started out very smarmy and attention needy, and as a new teacher in a difficult class I struggled to give it to him, so he acted out probably for attention from me or his peers. He was in 7th grade, and alternated between acting extremely mature talking about 6, cursing, acting like a little gangster, and being very immature compared to his peers head draw little kid cartoons, discuss Santa, and beg to do classroom chores. What he didn't do was work. When I held my first parent-teacher conference it all became clear. His grandma who raised him had died last year and his mom was in and out of jail. His dad was only allowed supervised visits and flaked out a lot. His guardian was an elderly lady who had agreed to take care of Miles and his brother until the mom got out of prison. Mom never showed up and didn't want either boy. The Guardian has recently been diagnosed with cancer and didn't have the energy to control or handle the hurt, grieving middle schooler. She said things such as I'm old and sick, I wasn't supposed to be raising him, if it weren't for his grandma I would wash my hands, has no good, and I can't do anything for him. If I'm not doing right by him, take him this is all I can do. It was eye opening and sad. I wish I could say that I saved Miles, or that I changed his life. When he was sent to another school our school was grade based he came up, and hugged me, and thanked me the teacher he gave held to every day, and it felt like a minor victory. 
Honestly though, it wasn't good enough. I couldn't do enough. I'm no longer a teacher and this is a big reason why. My feelings of inadequacy. Teacher's assistant here. The elementary school I work in has a 53% free and reduced lunch population. A first grade teacher noticed that one of the Hispanic non-English speaking kindergartners would come to school wearing oversized, beat up sneakers. With her own money, she went out and bought a pair of sneakers and a couple of pairs of Spiderman socks for him. She took a guess at his size. Being a mom, she had a good idea. He loved his new sneakers, but didn't know what socks were. He asked her what they were for. She had to explain what they were used for and help him put them on. Boy, did his face light up. Preschool. Yeah fun times. Noticed a girl with clear behavioral issues come to school on Monday in her Friday outfit. She's covered in filth, and even her hair has food stuck in it. Give her a clean up of paper towels and warm water. Have my assistant change her clothes mail here. Miss K does that, and wrote a report for documentation, just in case. I come back from my lunch break and protective services has already come in, and taken her away. I'll never see her again or know what was going on. All I know, is that mom had weekend rights. Makes me sad still, but also makes me continue to write those reports. Preschool is fun. It'll tell a story a teacher friend of mine told me, and it really messed with me. She had this little girl in her class, who was known to act out a lot, so they'd gotten used to knowing how to settle her down etc. One day she seemed to be extra difficult, and when they sent the kids off for lunch, the girl came up to the teacher, and clung to her leg asking, if she could have some food. Turns out she'd, been sent to school with no lunch or money. She also hadn't had any breakfast, oh, or dinner the night before. I really really hate people being hungry. It upsets me more than most things in the thought of this little girl starving and not understanding why nobody would feed her messed with me for days. And it still gives me a horrible feeling now, when I remember it. <laughs> Science teacher here, was doing a unit on genes, had students do a Punnett square for their blood types with their parents. Student came to me with a problem, her blood type didn't reconcile with her father's. I asked if she was sure and she was. So I told her she should ask her parents about it. At the end of the unit she told me she was, was the product of grape. It put her on a downward path, and led to a lot of fights and her parents splitting. I lost track of her, when she moved to high school. TL. Dr. Science Lab turned into a lifetime movie. Edit. Yes. Redditors. We don't do that lab anymore. My first year teaching, was in an inner city middle school. About 8 weeks into the school year, I confiscated a notebook from a 6th grader, after she smacked another student over the head with it. After school that day, I received a phone call, and needed to jot down a note. I opened the spiral notebook to a random blank page, and wrote down my note, then ripped out the page. I turned around in my chair, and graded papers for a while, and then turned back to take a drink. I was leaned back in my chair, taking a long pull of coke, and letting my eyes wander about until they landed on the word posse written in the notebook. I was so startled, that I nearly choked on my coke, so it took a minute for me to regain my composure, sit up and take a good look at the page. It was a note to the student's best friend, explaining in great detail about added to at, how her own grandmother performed oral six on her quite often, and how great it felt, and how she, the student, would do it to her best friend, as soon as they had a chance. Yes, I called the authorities. No, they didn't take the child out of the home.